Thank you. Dinner time. Quite much. Hello, Professor. Hey, Ryan. Hey, you made it. Yeah, sorry. I, Thanks I, for I letting didn't... me in. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm out of the office right now, but uh, but I, when I do get um, voicemails, it, it does send me an email. So, yeah, I'm glad I was able to get you the link before uh, before it started. Yeah, thank you for sending that link. Um, so, it, just talking about your email, you usually add some people if there's significant interest or if, like, something opens up. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I usually wait until after the first after the first week. Um, so I, I saw I saw an earlier email from you said your 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 waitlist position won, and so I, I think you're pretty pretty safe. Um, you know to, to okay. get in, into the class. Um, you know because I, I know these technical. I mean, for this is a graduate course in a technical elective, and so these don't come up all the time. And so I mm -hmm. try to I try to be as accommodating as I can. It's just you know the more students, it 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 becomes a little bit hard. Um, um, for me, but um, you know, I um, I do I do try to add more students for for this class more than more than other ones. Yeah. Okay, good to know. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, but I but the department, but you know, the, another reason I wait till the, after the first week is that the department doesn't want to hear it right now because <laughs> I, I I actually don't have any um, any powers to add students um, at this moment. So um, the admins in our department kind of have to um, what they do is they basically just increase the capacity of the class, and so. They don't want to hear anything during the first week, and so they have, they're busy with other stuff. So I, I usually wait till after the first week to uh, to ask them that stuff. Yeah. Okay, because I have I have another class. Um, it's like a four hundred level, but I want to take this this okay. class. Should do you think I should just drop that class and then hold on to this one and then? I would I would I would hold on to both for now. Um, you know, okay. just because just because you know. Um, you know, because the department might, I mean, they've, ne they've never said no to me before, but, you know, they, they might for, for whatever reason. So, um, so I, I would hang on to the other class just in case. So yeah, don't lose that spot just to, but, but once, but once, I'm able, but once I'm able to, uh, once I get the okay from the department to, to increase the capacity, then I'll, I'll let you know, you can drop them. Yeah. Okay. Um, usually the deadline for dropping classes, I believe is um, end of this week, right? Yes. Um, Yes, that's true. Um, hmm. <laughs> let me let me let me see how things shake up by the by the end of the week, and then I'll I'll, I'll let you know. Yeah. Okay. Y yeah. Thank usually you. before the weekend, then um, then the picture will become more clear. But yeah, usually usually I have a couple students drop um, during the first week, and then um, you know then then you can take up the spot, especially especially if you're first in line. Yeah. Okay.
Hey, Raphael, how's it going? How are you doing, Dr. Tran? Good. How are you? Splendid. Just recovering from COVID. Oh, dang. When did you uh when did you get it? Uh about two weeks ago. So it's been like a week since I tested negative. Um, oh dang. Oof. But it was asymptomatic. I think the uh Omicron stuff is just like spreading, but not yeah. actually uh as severe as I guess Delta and the one before that. Well, glad you're feeling better. I'm glad uh glad you were feeling good this whole time. Yeah, it was, it was actually kind of fun. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> got to stay home from work. <laughs> yeah, definitely stay home from work. And um, my girlfriend was uh, with me, so it was, it was, it was okay. Watched a lot of shows. Tell you nice, that. nice, nice. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Angel, shut up. My cat was yelling. She just had dinner. Oh, we are. <laughs> I got a quick question since we're what about two minutes away or a minute away from starting. Um camp is still open, right? Um, it should be. Um, I don't think they're um Actually, I don't know if the buildings are open. Um, they might they might try to force everyone to to be home by closing the buildings. I I didn't get any. Um, I know that they want everyone to stay home during this time, but I don't know if they're actually closing the campus because I think at least I, I know a lot of the staff I think is still going to campus. Um, and it was it was it was open during winter break because I, I went there a few times. But, um, but yeah, I'm not sure if they locked it up for, for the start of the semester. Okay, I'll, I'll I'll check in on that, but I'm definitely looking for another um after hours lab pass so i think mm. that's gonna come your way oh yeah yeah for sure yeah this class is really late too so i think yeah i think it would be it'd be good to have that 
Yeah, I mean, I think everything after I get off work is after hours in terms of Cal State Fullerton, so. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, it's uh, seven o'clock, so let's go ahead and get started. All right, uh, so hello, everybody. Uh, so I wanna say uh, welcome to the spring 2022 semester, if uh, no one said that to you already, and uh, welcome to this course. Uh, so this course is EGME 541, uh, and the title that we have for it is uh, Finite Element Methods for Mechanical Engineers, okay? So my name is Professor Justin Tran, and I'm going to be your instructor for uh, for this course. Uh, and for today, you know what I what I thought we'd do is, you know, I mean, obviously we're still virtu we're virtual. We're um, virtual. You know, I think everyone's really sick of Zoom, but you know, this is this is kind of what we have to do. Uh, so for today, what I thought I'd do is is I would give just a brief introduction to the course, uh, what you can expect to learn, and and what skills you can expect to learn. Uh, and then I'm going to go over the syllabus and the um, and the course website um, as well. Okay. Um, and so at any time today, um, you know, if you have any questions about anything, you know, please don't feel, um, uh, please don't hesitate to ask. You can either turn on your microphone if you feel comfortable doing that, um, or you can put your, your questions in the chat, uh, and then I'd be happy to, uh, to read those and answer them. Okay. But once again, you know, my name is Professor Justin Tran, and um, away we go. Or actually, you know, before, before we begin, um, you know, I know a lot of people are just kind of moseying in right now. Um, are there any questions? Uh, does anyone have any questions I can answer before, um, before we really get started? I do have a lazy one. When is that intro assignment due, the email one? Uh, Sunday. So Sunday, 11.59. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. And so uh, let me just start out just a little bit of information about myself. Um, so my name is Professor Justin Tran. Uh, but I'm, I'm not particular about, you know, what you call me, you know, especially, especially in this class, because everyone here should be graduate students and, you know, we're all adults here. So, um, you know, you can call me whatever, whatever you feel comfortable with. And so some people call me professor, some people call me Dr. Tran, some people just call me Justin. Um, you know, if it's comfortable for you, then it's, it's comfortable for me. You know, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's not that big a deal for me. Um, I, I, I put this offer out there, you know, every semester, you know, no one's taken me up on it yet. Uh, maybe it's a good thing because you know maybe people are respectful, but um, you can even call me something like Dick Face, you know, and and I I'd be okay with that because you know I grew up in the I grew up in an era where um, of online gaming and online communication, so you know I've been called a lot a lot worse things by uh, by twelve year olds on on Xbox, so you know, and they've they've told me a bunch of terrible things they've done to my mother too, which is really concerning. So you know, nothing not 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 much of that stuff really bothers me anymore. So. You know, you can call me whatever you feel comfortable with, but but I will say that you know if you are being disruptive in the class with anything like that, then I'll, I'll probably just mute you and ignore you. All right, so my my office um, is in the CS building, and so it's CS five twenty six. I believe that's just upstairs of where our lecture um, is is taking place, um, and so that's convenient. Okay, uh, I'm not there. I'm not there physically right now because um, you know you've heard you've seen the email from the president that we're going to be um, work from home for the first two weeks. Uh, but after these two weeks, you know, I, I do plan on, on coming to the office, and so you can find me there. Uh, my email is uh, on the next line, and so my email is just ran at fullerton.edu, and so that's uh, um, an amalgamation of my name, okay? So it's the first three letters of my first name and my last name, um, but I always tell people it's easy to remember because it's, it, it, you kind of think of, um, you know, I, like I just ran a mile or I just ran a 5k, um, and so I always joke that, you know, maybe I, maybe I stole an email address from, from a running club here at Fullerton, but, um, you know, I haven't gotten any angry emails yet, so I guess I'm, I'm still okay. Uh, I grew up in this area, so I grew up in Cypress, California, and so if you're not sure where that is, that's about 10, 10 miles west of, of campus, and so I'm very familiar with this area, and um, in fact, I had a lot of good friends from high school come here to Cal State Fullerton for their, uh, for their degree. And so, you know, it's, it's great to be um, back in my hometown and, and teaching. So, um, you know, it's a great privilege for that. Um, a little bit about my educational background. I got my bachelor's from UCLA, my master's from UCSD and my PhDs from Stanford, uh, all of those in mechanical engineering. And so um, I've been in, in, in this department for uh, my entire life, okay? And my research interests are in um, biomedical applications for engineering tools. And in particular, you know, I'm really interested in seeing how we can use computational fluid dynamics um, to simulate blood flow to study heart and blood disease. So a lot of my research is centered around, around that, either to develop the development of those tools um, or in the applications to actually you know, um, solve some problems. Uh, and just by nature of being a, an educator in STEM, I'm also interested in you know, what are some effective ways to, um, to teach STEM you know, for um, you know, at all levels, you know, at, uh, at the college level, at the high school level, you know, I'm, I'm interested in, um, you know, what are ways that we can, we can do this thing better. 
All right, so learning objectives. And so, um, and so you'll, you'll get a lot of these throughout the semester. And so I love, um, I love these learning objectives. And if you've never seen them before, um, what learning objectives are, are um, they are basically statements or they're basically um, skills um, that you should be able to do, you know, um, throughout, the, um, throughout the course of the course, okay? And so the way I, I like to use them is this. So at the beginning of every lecture, I, um, I like to have a list of learning objectives for the day, okay? So usually there's like two or three or four. And then by the end of lecture that day, you should be able to do everything on that list. OK, and so let's take an example for today. And so after today, you know, what you should be able to do is to describe the use and utility of finite element analysis in engineering work. OK, and so uh, what you'll notice for these learning objectives is that they always start with a verb. OK, and I do that on purpose because a verb is something that you can do. A verb is something that you can um, actually practice and, and assess, you know, how well that you can actually do that. Right. And so I, the reason I do this is, is, is a way for you to, I mean, for me, you know, it's a way to organize the content in terms of actually actionable skills, you know, which is what you're in school for is to actually learn skills that you can learn on, on the job. Okay. Um, skills that you can actually use in your professional life. Um, but I think it's also a good way for you to assess how well that you've learned each, um, you know, each, 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 each lecture and each topic. And so, you know, what I always encourage my students to do is that at the beginning of every lecture, you know, when you're writing your notes, write down what all the learning objectives are for the day. Um, and then by the end of lecture, what you should do is you should go back to the learning objectives that we wrote at the beginning and then read them and ask yourself, you know, can I do this, you know, after the lecture today? Um, and if you can, that's great. You know, that means you got everything out of the lecture that I wanted you to get. If not, then, you know, it might be a good idea to review the notes again or maybe talk to me um, or you get some help just to make sure that you can actually perform those, those tasks, okay? Um, and so learning objectives is, you know, something I'm going to use a lot in this class, uh, but they're there to help you. They're there to help organize the, the topics and, you know, and to tell you, you know, what kinds of skills that you can expect to learn, you know, on a day-to-day, -day, on a week-to-week, -week, on a, you know, on, a, on, on this, from this semester and from this course. Okay. Oh, and if you have any questions about anything, you know, today, today's, you know, going to be fairly informal. And so, you know, feel free to ask a question anytime. So, uh, if you if you feel comfortable enough, you can you can definitely turn on your mic and ask a question like that, um, or you can put a question in the chat and and I'd be happy to uh, to read those and answer them. Okay. All right, and so let's get into you know what this course is all about. And so you know the name of this course is finite element analysis for mechanical engineers. And so let's start by describing you know what is finite elements and and why is it important. Okay. Because um, I think, you know, at this point, you know, especially since all of you are graduate students, you've probably heard of finite elements before. Um, you know, maybe you've heard of ANSYS or maybe you've heard of, of maybe Abacus or maybe you've seen some images of what finite element is. You know, but I, I do want to start out with kind of a basic definition just so that we're all on the same page. Okay. And so the way I define finite elements is a, it's a numerical technique for solving differential equations on arbitrary geometries. Okay. And so let's unpack this statement because it's there's it's only one statement here, but there's kind of a lot going on. Okay? So let's start with numerical, and and that's kind of a word that I, I have here that's underlined. Okay, and so whenever you see the word numerical, or you see the word computational in an engineering context, what that basically means is that this technique is going to leverage computers um, to perform arithmetic and calculations at very very high speeds, and so it speeds it speeds that you know that are much much faster than what a human could do. Okay. Um, because you've probably seen before, you know, in previous classes where, you know, you, maybe the first time you learn heat transfer, or maybe the first time you learn structural mechanics, a lot of that is done with, you know, pencil and paper calculations, uh, which is great for learning a lot of the fundamentals of the, uh, um, of the, um, and a lot of the concepts of the, um, of the course, but it's not, it's, it's a little bit too slow to actually use in practical situations. And so, you know, if you're designing like, like a, like a very complex building or, or you're describing, or you're designing, you know, maybe like a, um, you know, maybe even just like a like a like an L beam or something like that, right? Um, then those are usually too complex in terms of geometry to use hand calculations. And so in those cases, you know, it really helps to have a computer to help do a lot of the you know the nitty gritty kind of calculations for you. Okay. Um, and so what finite elements allows us to do, or what what allows engineers to do, is it it is it allows engineers to predict how a physical system will react when subjected to external effects, okay? Because um, a lot of times when you're designing things as, a, when you're designing things as an engineer, um, you know, you wanna see how it's gonna react, right? And so you design a car 
and you want to see how it's going to react when you know when one person sitting it or when three people are sitting it right um, and you want to do that without having to build an entire car right and so what finite elements allows you to do is to you know is to simulate this basically and so you know you can you can cat up your car in, in finite elements you can put people in it you can put you know like a like a 30 pound bag in the trunk and you can see how the car is going to react okay and that's really powerful because you know by simulating all these in a computer you avoid having to um, to do perform a physical test um, which is which can be very expensive and time consuming okay and in practice you know a lot of um, engineering systems you know fall into this category okay because uh, most practical engineering systems you're not going to be you know you're not going to be designing a simply supported beam you know you're going to be doing you know real geometries which are, which have a lot of complexity and so you know having a computer to kind of help you out with these is really really useful okay okay um and so with that you know let me let me uh, make some distinctions here between the types of analysis that you can that you can do as an engineer right and so uh the first type of analysis um what i like to call you know pen and paper calculations are analytical ones and so these are um, these are I think kind of the first methods that that everyone learns when they're first taking a course. And what these involve is you know you you have a physical situation, and you have its governing equations, right? Um, and what you do is you basically solve those governing equations to get the solution. And then by solving those governing equations, you can perform engineering design and analysis, you know, like you've done before. Okay. Um, and so when when you can do this, you know, it's really fast and it's really inexpensive. But all it takes is just a pencil and a paper, right? Um, but the limitation to analytical um, um, techniques is that it's you can only do it for very simple, very simple problems, right? So anything with any kind of complexity, you're not able to do that. Okay. Uh, the next type of analysis you can do is called experimental, right? And so uh, for an experimental technique, you know this is this is really the best way for you to get you know real data, right? And so if you want to see if your if your car is going to survive a crash, so if you ran your car into a brick wall. The best way to try it out is to actually crash your car, right? Um, because you know mother mother nature doesn't lie, and so you know if it actually happened, then it actually happened, and you know there's no one that can dispute that. Okay, and so experimental methods, you know, these are the best way to get what I like to call concrete evidence or concrete data on how a physical system will respond. Okay, uh, the downside to experimental techniques is that they can be um, you know very costly and very time consuming. Okay. Imagine if you're trying to crash um, to make your car, you know, crash, um, crash um, test worthy. Um, you're not going to, you know, your, your company is going to be very unhappy with you if you say that, you know, I need to crash 30 cars in order to, for me to get this design right. Right. So no one's going to pay for that. Um, and so, you know, um, experiments, you know, they have they definitely have their their use, uh, but you have to be very careful about how you design your experiments. Okay. And so the last, um, the last type of um, analysis that you can do, which is you know what we're going to focus on in this class, is computational, right? And so for a computational method, it's it's very similar to analytical in that we're going to be solving you know differential equations or governing equations, but instead of doing it by hand, we're going to make a computer do it. Okay? And so the great thing about computational is that it can you know because we're leveraging computer power, you know we can handle very complex situations very quickly. Um, you know, and, and, you know, without the cost of, of, you know, destroying a test sample. Um, but the tricky thing with computational is that they can be, you know, very tricky to set up, right? And so that's what, a lot, that, that's, you know, what we're going to focus on a lot in this class is how do we set up a computational problem, you know, effectively so that you can get reliable results, okay? Uh, any questions on this so far? Okay. All right, so let's let's go over some examples of you know of an example that you can simulate um, or that you can that you can um, analyze analytically versus a situation that you can analyze computationally, right? And so let's let's look at a beam first, right? And so what I have here is, is a very simple beam. It's a simply supported beam, and so on one side you have a pin support, and on the other side you have a roller support, uh, and you have a distributed loading, right? And so what you can do is you can because this is just a one-dimensional case. You can solve the beam equations and get a solution for the beam deflections. It is my favorite example. Yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, but if you want to do something more complex, and so you know, let's say that you want to design, you know, the beams that go into this, you know, very high-rise building, you know, this is really hard to do with with pencil and paper calculations. And so what I'm showing you here is an example of a simulation uh, where they simulated, you know, they put some load onto the structure. 
Okay. They put some load onto the structure and, uh, um, sorry, they put some load onto the structure and then they, uh, um, you know, and they simulated the response, okay? And so this is something that you can only do with, uh, with finite elements. Okay, uh, next we have a heat transfer example. And actually, you know, we'll be seeing heat transfer a lot in this class because it's, it's, it's relatively, you know, uh, a, a relatively easy um, equation to solve compared to structures. And so if you wanted to solve a heat transfer um, problem by hand, you know, this is a situation that you can do where let's say that we have a um, heat transfer through a rectangular slab where one end of the slab is held at a certain temperature T1 and the other end of the slab is held at a temperature T2. And so from here, you know, because it's a simple one dimensional case, you can solve for the amount of heat that goes from the left side to the right side. Okay. Uh, but, you know, if you wanted to solve for a, um, you know, more complex situation, so let's say that we have like a turbine blade here, uh, maybe that's inside an, uh, an aircraft engine, uh, then because this geometry is so complex, you know, we have to rely on, on, on finite elements to, uh, to do this, okay? Sorry, my uh, YouTube keeps uh, going off. Okay. Professor? Yeah. For those of us who don't have experience with um, heat, heat and heat transfer, will, be, will we be all right doing these problems or will we need to review a little bit more on our own? Yeah, no, you'll, you'll be totally fine. And so, you know, we, I know, um, and, and actually, you know, I had a question about this too. I, I know for each of me 410 is a prereq for this class, um, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna motivate all of the theory from, from scratch. Right. So the, the reason I bring up heat transfer is because, um, you know, uh, and once once we get to the equation, you'll see is that the heat, the heat equation is, is you know, relatively simple to um, to solve. Um, but we're going to be looking at it, you know, kind of actually purely from a mathematical point of view. And so um, we're actually going to be solving the equation from scratch using finite elements. And so, you know, you, you actually need you actually don't really need any kind of heat transfer background to, um, you know, to do well in this class. Yeah. Yeah. Good okay. question. Though. Thanks, Professor. Mm -hmm. All right, and so finally, you know, I have an example for fluid flow, um, and so we're not we're not going to get to fluids much in this class because you know fluids is actually kind of its own different beast. But I did want to show you that finite elements does apply to fluid flow as well. Okay, so here is an example where you can solve by hand. Uh, we have simple flow in a pipe. Okay, so you have our you know your parabolic profile there. Uh, but if you wanted to solve a more complex case, then you would have to rely on simulations. And so this is actually an image from one of my colleagues, which, um, which actually, you know, he's working on developing a new surgical technique uh, for certain patients. Okay? And so for this, uh, for this particular case, what he proposed was they said, you know, let's connect these two blood vessels together here. Okay? And this can actually, um, you know, this can actually provide a lot of benefits for, um, for patients with a, um, what we call a single ventricle. And so those are patients that are only born with a single heart chamber. And so what he proposes is that, you know, if we make this connection here, that's going to help their, their blood flow efficiency quite a bit. Um, and actually, and he, and he did the simulations to show that it, it performs really well. And actually, you know, right now it's in the process of actually, you know, being implemented in, in people. So there are a few surgeons that were interested in trying this. And so they're, they're working through the clinical trials right now to actually put it in practice. But, you know, I like bringing this up because it's, it's kind of a success story for finite elements where, you know, finite elements is, um, you know, most people associated with engineering um, applications, uh, but it can make an impact on, um, on biomedical applications as well. Okay. All right. Any questions on any of this? <clears throat> yeah, Professor, what is the difference between EGME 540 and this one? Great question. So um, actually, you know, we can go ahead and skip up to that one um, now. Um, so I know, I know a lot of people here um, took EGME 540 last semester. Um, so this is going to be a different class. And so, you know, the big difference here is that EGME 540, we focused a lot more on the application. And so, um, you know, we use ANSYS kind of, you know, thoroughly throughout that class. Uh, so this class is going to focus a lot more on the theory. Um, and so, you know, in this class, we're actually going to be learning, you know, what are, what are the mathematical details and what are the implement, implementation details that go in to writing a finite element code. And so, you know, what we're going to do is we're going to take differential equations, um, the heat equation, just like I kind of mentioned before, and we're going to, we're going to go through the process of, you know, how do we take this differential equation and set it up in a finite element um, way and actually write the code to actually solve this, you know, um, effectively. 
Um, and so we're going to do, we're actually going to be doing very little answers in this class. And so we'll, we'll do just a, a, a little bit just to kind of, I think, because I think it gives some good context for what finite elements is, but we're going to be focusing almost exclusively on the theory and the implementation. Okay? And so we're going to be doing a lot of math. We're going to be doing a lot of uh, MATLAB programming, you know, along the way. So this is kind of the, you know, I would say kind of EGME 540 is kind of the, the front, the front facing, you know, what most people think of when they think of finite elements. And this is like all the background information of, you know, how, how does finite elements actually work and how do we actually implement that, um, you know, write the code. Okay. Our question. So is the school going to offer um, EGME 540 in the, in the fall again? Um, I, I hope so. Um, so, you know, usually, usually our, usually our policy with graduate courses that they don't, they, you know, they don't offer it every single year. So actually the last time I taught this course was actually in the fall of 2020. Um, so, you know, uh, um, about a year and a half ago. And so, um, you know, I hope that they, I hope that they offer it again, because, you know, I, I really enjoyed that class and, and I agree, I think it's really important. Um, and so I, I'll talk to the department about it, but, um, but usually the, the graduate courses are, are on a little bit longer of a cool down. Yes, yes, I, I plan on talking to the department because I, I think, you know, I, I think I, I think it got a lot of positive feedback from last semester and I think a lot of students really appreciate it. Um, so yeah, I, I will, I will, I will um, ask to offer it again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I think, I think, I think the issue is that, you know, we have a lot of, we have a lot of very niche um, um, graduate courses and, and, you know, um, and finite elements counts as kind of like a niche, a niche topic. And so I think they want to give a fair, a fair distribution to all the, the niche topics, but, uh, but I, I will, I will ask, I will talk to the department and ask them to offer it in the fall. Nice, that's good. I'm glad to hear. I'm glad to hear. Yeah, it got a lot of good feedback. So you know, I'm, um, you know, usually, usually that's that's a good that's a good that's a good indication that the department should offer it more. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But this class is different. You know, I, I, you know, I, I, I know, I know a lot of people are coming in with a strong desire to learn ANSYS, um, but you know, this is kind of the other side because there's, um, you know, there's also. There's also, you know, there's also jobs out there where, you know, people have to develop this finite, the finite element code. And, you know, this class is kind of in preparation for those kinds of jobs and also in preparation for people that want to move on and, and, and do more with, um, you know, do more graduate school and developing finite element code as well. So, you know, this class, you know, I, 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 you know, I'm well aware that, you know, this class doesn't, you know, maybe not a lot of people would find this class as enjoyable as 540, you know, but I think it serves an important, uh, an important role and one that we have to keep in this uh, um, you know, and one that we need to keep in the curriculum for sure. Yeah, but we do, we will do a little bit of answers. And so, you know, we, you will, you will get to see a little bit of it. And so you'll at least learn the basic interface and you'll learn how to set up the, the problems. And what I'm hoping is that, you know, by learning all the theory and learning all the details of the implementation, um, it'll actually, you know, help you um, become a, a better ANSYS engineer because, you know, um, people will tell you from last semester that ANSYS will sometimes give you, you know, errors for, for seemingly no reason at all. <laughs> it'll give you an error message or it'll give you, you know, it'll tell you it can't do something. And you're kind of left wondering, you know, what's what's wrong. And a lot of those questions can be answered by, you know, by, by having a strong grasp of the theory and, and having a strong grasp of, you know, what's actually happening underneath the hood. So, you know, this class, I think, is, is, in, is, in, well, is in good support of those ANSYS skills. And, um, you know, I think it's, I think it's a good complement to 540. Okay. okay. And so with that, uh, let, let's kind of um, bring it back. And so, you know, I want to talk about what I like to, what I like to call the finite element process. Okay. Um, and so, you know, in order to set up a finite element computational problem, um, you know, there's, there's a process that you have to go through, right? And so it's, it's more than just kind of uploading a file and just, and just hitting go. Okay. And so, you know, I think the cool thing about this class is that you'll actually get to see the details about what all these different steps actually mean. Because if you if you just kind of learn ANSYS, then you know a lot of these details kind of get kind of swept under the rug. But if you start to know what these what you know the details of what these these processes are, um, then it becomes a lot easier to kind of understand you know uh, what's going on. Okay. All right. So the first step in the finite element process is uh, what I like to call discretization or discretize. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so whenever you have a complex geometry like this, you know, and I know this is not the most complex thing, but for a computer, this is pretty complex, right? Even for a computer, you know, it's very difficult for it to solve, you know, for um, for the differential equations on this. Okay. Because you have kind of like a, a curved pipe part, you have, a, you know, excuse me, you have a, um, 
a flange here, and you have kind of a fitting here at the end, okay? And so in order for a computer to actually solve differential equations on this geometry, it has to break it up into um, what, what are the, what these tiny little things, these tiny little shapes, which are called elements, okay? And so what you'll notice from these elements is that they're all the same shape, okay? And so in this case, they're all uh, blocks. And so they're all basically rectangular prisms um, that, the, uh, that they're all uniform in, in shape. Okay? They might all be different sizes, you know, but they all have the same number of sides and the same number of edges. Okay? And so a computer needs to do this in order to actually, you know, before it can actually solve any kinds of equations on this. Right? And so this step is called meshing. Right? And so when, you, when, uh, when an engineer says that you, know, you need to mesh your geometry, what they mean is that they need, you need to break up your geometry into a lot of simple, uh, a lot of simple shapes in order to facilitate the, uh, uh, the solving on that geometry. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so this is a, you know, probably a quadratic mesh or a, a hexahedral mesh on, on this thing. Um, and so, you know, when we do our first answers, and I, I think I, I've planned our first answers activity to be pretty early on. So, you know, you'll get to see, you know, what this actually, um, you know, means for, for that. Okay. All right. And so the next step in the process is to assume a functional representation. And so, you know, actually, you know, for this class, this is what we're going to focus a lot on. And, you know, for, for, five, for, vote, for those of you from 540, this is something that we completely ignored or almost completely ignored. Okay. Um, and so one really important step for finite elements um, is you have to assume kind of how the solution will look like, okay? And so we have to, and what that means is that, you know, we have to assume a functional form, right? And so the most common forms for this is either a linear function or a quadratic function, okay? And so what that basically is saying is that, you know, we're assuming that the solution looks like a linear function or it looks like a quadratic one, okay? It may, it may not, I mean, in most, in all likelihood, it probably does not look like it, but we're gonna approximate it to be because that, that makes it kind of easier to solve, okay? And the formal name for these types of functions um, that we'll learn, you know, a lot in this class are called shape functions, okay? And, you know, what I have here on the right is these are the shape functions for a simple, um, for a simple square, 2D square, um, element okay and so we'll become very you'll become very familiar with these uh, shape functions kind of throughout the uh, throughout the semester okay all right uh, so the next step is assembly okay and so once you have the um, once you've once you've kind of broken up your geometry into a mesh into lots of tiny tiny little elements and you've assumed a functional form on each of those elements then what you can do is that you can um, take each of those elements and assemble them into one single global system okay? And so what this is, is basically a very large system of linear equations, okay, um, that we can use to solve for the, um, you know, solve for the solutions, okay. Um, and so what you'll see is that, you know, a big goal of FEA in general is to take a, a differential equation, okay, a uh, differential equation being something like, you know, the, uh, the Navier-Stokes equations or the heat equations, and tr actually transform that into a set of linear equations, okay. And so we're going from differential equations to linear equations, okay? Uh, and so this, this, this is actually a really important step because, you know, if there's one thing that computers are really good at is it's really good at solving these really large complex systems of linear equations, okay? Um, and so something like this actually doesn't do it justice because, you know, you can see here that we have five, uh, we have a five by five matrix. And so this shows that we have five equations of five unknowns, okay? Uh, but in reality, you know, for most practical finite element systems, you know, you're going to have systems of like literally thousands and, or sometimes millions of equations um, and millions of unknowns, right? And so, you know, it's not uncommon to get, you know, a linear system that's like a thou, like, you know, let's say 100,000 by 100,000, okay? Okay. And this, you know, a system of equations that's 100,000 by 100,000. I won't say it's impossible to solve by hand, but you know um, you have to be either really um, masochistic or really you know um, you know really um, you know, maybe maybe you hate yourself so much to try to solve a hundred thousand by hundred thousand system of equations. Okay, so for all practical purposes, that's that's going to be practically impossible for humans to solve. Okay. Uh, but for a computer, you know, it's it's really easy to solve because you know if there's one thing that computers are are really good at, it's 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 doing a lot of repetitive calculations really quickly. Okay, and so you know the really big benefit of finite elements is that it's able it's able to take a complex differential equation system and transform it into a system of linear equations. Because then from there, 
you know, this is when we tell the computer to, you know, just do your thing and then it, it can solve it from there. Okay. Right. Uh, and so the next thing that we have to do is we have to apply boundary conditions. Okay. Uh, and so we'll talk about boundary conditions a lot in this class, but what boundary conditions are is they, they basically de define how the solution is behaving at the, you know, at the boundaries of, uh, of the system. Okay. Okay. Um, and so this is really important because it's, it's, a, it's a necessary step for solving a differential equation. Okay. Uh, and so we'll talk about, you know, what the different types of boundary conditions are out there and how they relate to, to physical problems. Okay. Okay. And then from there, the next step is to solve. Okay. And so once the, once the global linear system is set up and once we've applied the boundary conditions, we can then tell the computer to solve for the solutions. And so this is the step that, you know, you, um, you basically never see. And so this is basically when the computer is going to be doing most of the work. Okay. Okay. Um, and some, and depending on the size of the system, this can take, you know, anywhere between a few seconds um, to a few hours to, you know, and, I, and I've seen some simulations run for a few days as well. And so, you know, those are, those are some really heavy simulations, but, you know, um, but yeah, this is an important step for, for finite elements. Okay. And then once the, uh, once the solution is done solving, then uh, we can move on to post-processing. And so this is when we actually, you know, analyze the results and we can actually, you know, um, form some engineering conclusions and do some design from, from that. Okay. Uh, we won't see too much of that of this, this semester because, you know, again, we're going to be focusing on, on the theory. Um, but, you know, it's important. It's an important step to know from finite elements because this is when you actually take those results and, and actually do something useful with them. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, any questions on, on this so far? Okay. Okay. And so one thing I want to emphasize from this class um, is that FEA is just, it's just a tool, you know, and I think, cause I think a lot of times when people see simulations and they see really important figure, really nice figures like that, they want to make FEA to be, uh, make it out to be something more, right? Um, almost to the point where people trust FEA a little bit too much, right? And so I think a fallacy that a lot of young engineers do is that, you know, they, they run a simulation in ANSYS or something, or they run it in another code and they take it and they just take those results blindly. And so they say, you know, the, the ANSYS told me to do this. And so I'm going to do that. Okay. And so, you know, I want to emphasize that FEA is not a magic conch. Okay. And so, you know, it's just, it's just another tool that you have in your engineering toolbox. And, and just like any tool, you know, it can be, it can be misused. Right. Um, and also it's, it's not going to work for every single situation. Okay. Um, and so in order to use FEA properly, you know, you have to, um, you have to actually, you know, know how to actually set it up and, and to actually set up, set up the mesh and set up the boundary conditions correctly. Okay. And so FEA is, is, is basically useless if the, if the operator is, un, is untrained. Okay. And actually in the computational world, we have a saying that goes along with this called uh, garbage in, garbage out. Okay. And so what that basically means is that if you put garbage into your finite element simulation, and by that, you know, we mean that you, you don't set up the mesh properly or you don't set up the boundary conditions properly, you're going to get garbage results and it's not going to be useful for anyone. Okay. And so knowing how to set up an FEA sim, um, simulation properly, you know, with all the steps and, and with all the theory behind it is important if you, if you're going to use this, you know, in a, in a professional setting. Okay. Okay. Uh, and it's also important to recognize that, you know, even if you do the best that you can, so even if you, you, if you do everything correctly, you set up, you do all the setup, you do all the boundary conditions, your mesh looks great and everything, your FEA solutions here, they're only an, an approximation of reality or they're only a prediction of what reality is, okay? Um, they are not exact. And so, you know, you know, when you have an FEA solution, you know, it's, that's not a prediction, that's not a crystal ball to say that, you know, our, our physical system is gonna do this, okay? We want them to be as close as we can um, but they're never going to be exactly the same as what reality is. Okay. Um, I mean, a lot of times it's, it's going to be, you know, decimal places off of what it should be, but, you know, just recognize that it's, it's never going to be perfectly exact. Okay. And so I, I want to say this now because, you know, um, you know, cause I, I'm, you know, just like, just like I kind of told you, I, I was kind of upfront with you guys about this class, you know, I want to be upfront with you guys about, you know, um, kind of the limitations of this tool, because I think that's important to know as, as an expert in this, in this field to know, you know, what are the limitations of my tool and, and what, it can, what, can it, what can it be used for and what can it not be used for, okay? All right, any questions on, uh, any questions on this? 
Okay. All right. So let's go over. Uh, let's go over an overview for the course. Okay. Um, and so you know, I I kind of I've, I've kind of broken up the course into these kind of four um, four sections. Okay. And so in the first part of the course, we're going to have an introduction to the course. Right. And so this includes a lot of the review that we're going to do. Okay. And so we have some um, MATLAB to review um, because you know MATLAB programming is going to be a big part of this course. Uh, we have um, some um, some physical um, knowledge to review as well. Okay. And then from there, we're going to move on to a section of what I like to call the direct stiffness method. Okay. And so the direct stiffness method is a um, is a uh, what I like to call a kind of a simplified finite element technique. Um, but it's I think it's really good to kind of you know just introduce a lot of the the essential ideas of you know what actually goes into a finite element code. Okay. And then uh, from there, we're going to take what we learned from the direct stiffness uh, method, and then actually apply that to solving you know real differential equations. Okay. And so I think this is going to be a, a big the big bulk of the course. And actually, your, your final project is going to be based on kind of what we learned from from this section of the course here as well. Okay. And so this is going to be you know I think I think kind of the most important part of the course right here. Okay. And then from there, um, you know we're going to cover some miscellaneous topics on finite elements of you know what's what's kind of practically practically important to know you know to apply finite elements in, in practice okay and here's kind of a bigger breakdown of you know of what each of what each section kind of um entails okay and so all throughout you know um let me move this okay uh and so all throughout you know uh, a lot of what we're going to be learning is going to be you know um applied in the software okay and so, like I said, you know, we're going to do a little bit of ANSYS, not not too much, but you know, just enough so that you you get the basics and can kind of understand, you know, what the end goal of finite elements is. But a lot of the focus of this class is going to be in the MATLAB implementation. Okay, and so we're going to be using MATLAB to basically write our own finite element code. Okay. Okay, and so you know, uh, I think a quite I think a fair question to ask. Um, you know, especially for this class, you know, is, you know, why do we need to bother to learn the background knowledge to begin with, right? And so why can't we just learn ANSYS, you know, and just, and do that, okay? And so like I mentioned before, you know, finite element simulations, you know, they are very powerful. You know, I'm, I'm not, you know, I don't want to downplay how useful and powerful they are for, for an engineer, okay? Um, but remember, it's, it's just a tool, okay? And just like any tool, you know, it has its limitations and best practices, okay? And in order to understand what those limitations are and what those best practices are, you know, you need to understand the theory. You need to understand what the background knowledge is. You know, just so that you don't try to apply finite elements to something that's, you know, that's practically impossible. Okay, um, because you know, we want to say that finite elements is great, but you know, you want to make sure that you use it in the proper uh, in the proper context. Okay, uh, and it's also important to know that you know, finite elements is it's not going to work all the time. And so it's it's not it's not a it's not a staples easy button, right? And so you can't just say, you know, I have this problem. You know, answers solve it, you know, and ANSYS is not going to come back to you and say that was easy. Okay. It's, uh, in fact, it's, it's going to give you more problems than, than anything I would say. Okay. Uh, and so if you have a firm understanding of the fundamentals and the theory behind the technology, um, you know, on the one hand, it's going to help you debug um, problems and it's going to help you interpret, um, you know, how reliable your results are, you know, which is, which is a really important skill to use, for, you know, to know for, um, for an engineer. Okay. Um, and also, you know, um, when you leave this class, you know, you're basically going to be considered an expert in finite elements. And, you know, what I say is that, you know, as an expert, you know, it's your responsibility as an expert to really know, you know, how to, how to best use your tool and what its, what its limitations are. Okay. All right. So an example for this that I like to give is a veterinarian, right? And so for a vet, um, you know, let's say that your pet is sick, um, you know, you take your cat to the vet and you expect your vet to know, you know, these, uh, what I like to call procedural skills. Um, although nowadays the vet never does this, they make her, the nurses do this, but, you know, you expect your vet to know, you know, how to give a shot to an animal, how to take a blood sample, uh, maybe how to perform an eye or an ear check, okay? Uh, but in addition to that, you know, you expect your vet to know, you know, the conceptual knowledge behind it, right? So, you know, you're, you expect your vet to give you a reason why, you know, you're giving it your, 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 uh, your pet a shot, right? You know, so your vet's not just sticking random needles and injecting random chemicals into your pet, right? And so, you know, you expect your vet to tell you why it's, it's doing that, right? And so that, that comes with the conceptual knowledge, the theoretical knowledge, right? Uh, you expect your vet to know, you know, why an animal is sick, you know, and you expect it to tell you, you know, what you need to do uh, in order to get to be better. And you expect it also to, um, you know, interpret animal behavior as well. Okay, and the same goes for finite elements, right? And so, you know, under these skills, 
And so, you know, what I like to consider in these skills is, um, you know, procedural skills, this would be like using ANSYS, okay? Right? And so being able to, you know, click all the right buttons and, and you know, upload the files correctly in ANSYS, you know, that those are procedural skills, you know, which are, of course, very important to know, okay? But you also need to know the theory behind it, okay? So just so that, you know, you're applying it correctly and you know how to debug issues when they come up. Um, and if you've used answers before, you know that issues come up a lot, okay? And so knowing the theory behind it will help you, you know, debug those, those issues, okay? Okay, and so once again, you know, um, I just want to emphasize that this class focuses on theory. And so, you know, we're, we're going to be using answers a little bit, but it's, it's definitely not going to be the focus, okay? And so the ultimate goal for this class is, you know, is for you to be able to write and, um, and to implement your own finite element code, okay? Um, you know, and we're not going to be we're not going to be programming something on the level of ANSYS, you know, that's, you know, that obviously has a huge um, company behind it and a huge team of engineers. But, you know, um, I want you to be able to, to program a, a relatively simple finite element code, you know, to solve a, a heat transfer problem in 2D. Okay. And so that's, that's basically what your final project is going to be. Okay. And so if you are interested in the practical application of ANSYS, you know, that's, that's more taught in EGME 540. Um, and again, you know, that was taught just last fall, but, you know, you know, I will, I will talk to the department to see if they can offer it next fall as well. Okay. okay. Um, so any questions on, um, on the course outline before we go to the syllabus? Okay. Uh, question. So can I give an example of what we were dealing with in MATLAB? Sure. Uh, actually, let me go ahead and exit this. Okay. So actually, let me open up one of the codes from before. So this is from last year. Let me see. So this is a good one. Well, actually, my MATLAB license is expired. I need to uh, I need to um, I need to renew it. So actually, let me just open this up in Notepad just so you can kind of see. Okay. Right. And so you know you're going to be writing code like this. Okay. So basically, you know um, what you're going to be doing in MATLAB is you know we're going to be forming a uh, the system of equations in MATLAB. You're going to be forming a very large matrix. And then you're going to be using MATLAB to solve it. Okay, so a lot of it is going to be kind of defining variables like this, um, doing calculations, assigning matrix values just like that. Okay, and then you're going to be doing it. You know, um, and then you're going to be asking. Um, you're going to be assigning boundary conditions, and you're going to be solving. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So it's a. Uh, I, I have a license. I just I just need to I just need to renew it. <laughs> uh, but this is a but this is just kind of a, a quick preview of, of the code that you that you'll see. And and I, I know it I know it looks kind of crazy right now, but you know we'll we'll go through this kind of step by step you know throughout the semester. So I'm not I'm not just gonna I'm not just gonna uh, throw you to the wolves, okay? Um, and so you know I know MATLAB I know MATLAB is is you know it kind of triggers a lot of feelings in a lot of people, but you know. If there's any, if there's another goal that I have for this class is, you know, I want everyone to leave this class, you know, with a little bit more comfort, with a little bit more confidence in, in their MATLAB skills, because, you know, programming, I, I think, is a really important skill to, to learn, you know, for, for an engineer, you know, especially moving forward, you know, where a lot of our society is going to be data driven, it's going to be, you know, have a lot of a, uh, um, you know, a lot of, um, you know, programming that's going to be involved. And so, you know, the more programming that you know, you know, the, uh, the better, you um, the better position you're going to be in, in in your career okay and so what i hope what i what i hope for this class too is that you know maybe maybe you maybe you didn't have the best experience with your with your previous matlab course um but i hope after this course then you know after you know actually seeing a practical implementation of, of practical use of matlab then you're going to have more confidence and more comfort using it for, for the future okay all right um so let's talk about the syllabus okay so first thing i want to talk about is office hours okay and so my office location is uh, CS five twenty six, um, and so obviously I'm not there right now because I'm in my I'm in my home. But uh, um, you know, but after the two weeks here, uh, you'll you can find me in that office, okay? Um, or you can or you can come to office hours through Zoom, okay? And so you can um, check Canvas for the Zoom links, and I'll show you how to do that later, okay? And so my office hours times are going to be uh, Mondays eleven a.m. to twelve p.m., uh, Tuesdays from nine a.m. to ten a.m., and Thursdays from one to two p.m. Okay. Um, and so I do this, um, you know, I, and I make these uh, I make these hours the way they are, just to kind of um, be as flexible as as um, as I can, okay? Because I know everyone's schedule is different, um, but at the same time, I know that you know everyone here is a graduate student, and I know most of you are working during the day, and so for a lot of you, you know, these times don't work at all, 
Uh, but the unfortunate thing about my schedule this semester is that all my classes are in the evening. So actually, right before this class, I, I teach another class, you know, from 530 to 7. Um, and then on Tuesdays and Thursdays, I teach a class from 4 to 530. Um, and I have one more class on Mondays from 230 to 4. So my afternoons are actually really booked, unfortunately, with, with teaching. And so, um, you know, if these, if these times don't work for you, um, or if you, if you want to talk to me and you can't come to office hours, then you know, then, then just let me know. And so, you know, I, I, I've left other um, rooms, um, other spots in my schedule to meet with, uh, to meet with students. And so, you know, if these times don't work, then we can find a time that works for you. And, you know, um, and I've, I've also met, you know, for, for my graduate students too, you know, just cause I know, you know, you guys are, you know, you guys have a lot of, you have jobs during the day. Um, I've often met with graduate students after, after hours as well. And so, you know, after, you know, sometimes after this class, I know this class is really late. Um, you know, but I, but I am willing to meet with students after this class because I know that, you know, this time should be available for you. Uh, I met students on, you know, Friday evenings, Friday mornings, you know, weekends, you know, I've, I've, you know, I, I promise you all, I'll do my best to find a time that that works because, you know, because I think office hours are really valuable. And, you know, I know for a lot of you, it's, it's really hard because it's, uh, you know, because of your schedule. So, you know, I, I'll, I promise I'll, I'll try, I'll try to do what I can to find time to meet with you when I can. Yeah. At the bar. <laughs> I don't, uh, Maybe, maybe, maybe during the summer. <laughs> All right. Um, so office hours, um, you know, I, I probably don't have to tell you guys this, but, you know, if you um, office hours, most of the time people use them um, to clear up confusion on course content. And so if you have questions on the homework, questions on the exams, um, you know, or if you're just not understanding from the lecture, you know, office hours are your time to come by and, and, and get clarification on those or to get feedback from, from me. Okay. Uh, but, you, but you can also come to office hours for non-course related content as well. And so, you know, I've, I've, I've uh, given people career advice in office hours. I've, I've talked about, you know, just general life stuff or, you know, I've looked at people's resumes. And so, you know, you know, I've, I've done a lot of stuff in office hours. And so, you know, if you ever need to talk to me about anything, you know, office hours are the time to, to do it. So, you know, please don't, please don't be shy. Um, you know, I, I always tell my students that, you know, it's, it's, it's not my job to judge you or, or criticize you about, about anything you're doing in your life because it's, you know, I think, I think you guys have enough of that from, from a lot of different sources. So, you know, my, my job here is to be, um, be a resource for you, to be as, as supportive for you as I can, okay? And so if you ever need help with anything, you know, um, you know even, even, even work stuff, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I, can, I can do my best to comment on that as well you know, use me. And so, you know, you know, use me as a resource as, as much as you can, because, you know, that's, that's what I'm here for. That's, that's what they pay me. That's what they pay me to do. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's true. I've, uh, I've helped, I've helped, you know, students that, uh, um, you know, where I wasn't, uh, where that I wasn't even, I, I have classes that I wasn't even teaching before. So, you know, I've, I've done that as well. Um, with graduate students, it's, it's a little bit harder. Um, um, you know, a lot of the a lot of the courses and a lot of the graduate courses are really advanced, and so there's only so much I can do with that. But you know, I promise that I'll I'll at least look at it and and, and I'll do my best to to give my advice when I when I can. Yeah. All right, learning objectives, and so um, you know, oh, we are uh, we are running a little bit short, so I do want to move a bit fast. Um, and so you know, just like I mentioned before, you know, I have learning objectives for the course, um, and so these are kind of the course level learning objectives, and so. Um, you know, after the course, you should be able to do everything on this list. And so, you know, definitely keep these in mind, you know, especially as we, um, you know, as we go through the, as we go through the course. Okay. All right. So let's talk deliverables. And so um, there's going to be seven homework. I do have seven homework assignments planned. Um, a couple of those are ANSYS activities. And so, you know, those are the ANSYS activities are included there. Okay. Uh, I do have two midterm exams planned and one final project. Okay. Um, um, I do have a policy where I, I drop the lowest homework, um, just because I know that you know everyone here is I know really busy with uh, with with other stuff, and so you know I I don't you know I want to I, I don't want you to feel like that you know you have to turn in everything on time all the time, you know just to do well in this course, and so you know I I, I mean I know that that's impossible you know given how busy you guys are, and so you know by dropping the lowest homework you know I hope that this gives you some flexibility in in terms of you know, how you how you plan your semester okay. Uh, but, with, but with that said, you know, I, I do want you to do all of them, okay? And so I, I um, you know, you may disagree with me. Um, you probably will disagree with me. Um, but, you know, I, I don't assign homeworks to, do, to be just pure busy work, okay? So I don't assign them just to waste your time, okay? And so I, I assign the homework problems, you know, really thoughtfully. And so, you know, I give you problems that I think will, you know, help enhance your, your understanding of the material. 
you know, especially especially for a course like this where the programming is such a big aspect of the of the course, you know, the homework assignments are your chance to kind of practice, you know, that programming and to practice those concepts and grapple with them. Okay. Um, because it's, you know, when it's such when it's such kind of an applied skill like this, it's impossible to learn it by just having someone lecture at you. Okay. Um, I mean, and it's the same with ANSYS as well, right? And so you can watch all the YouTube tutorials in the world on ANSYS. You know, it's never, you're never gonna actually learn it until you actually try it yourself, okay? And it's the same thing with, with programming as well, right? And so please, please, please do try to do all of them. You know, you don't have to get all of them in on time, but, you know, I do want you to do all of them because, you know, I think they're, they're, they're a vital part of, of the learning in this class, okay? Um, and even on a short-term, on a short-term basis too, that, um, you know, what I like to do for my homeworks is that I like to assign, you know, fairly, fairly tough problems on the homeworks, you know, but I do that on purpose so that, you know, um, if you can do all the homework problems, then you're going to be set up extremely well for exams. Okay, so for the exams, I, I always give, you know, easier problems on the exams than do on the homeworks, uh, because an exam is a, is a very time constrained situation. So you don't really have a lot of time to really think and to really, you know, um, ponder over exam problems. And so you know, I want, I, I want, I don't want you to waste time on the exam, you know, trying to figure out what to do, um, you know, and because you're going to spend a lot of your time writing um, in, in that time constraint situation anyway, okay. And so if you do all the homework problems, and, and you really understand them, and you can really do all those problems well, I always tell students you're going to be in great shape for the exams. Yeah, okay. Uh, oh, uh, question. So are the assignments going to be graded on accuracy or completion? And so since this is a graduate course, you know, I, I know everyone here is, is you know, um, I can I can trust you guys to be, um, you know, um, uh, adults, you know, adults about the homework assignments, though. You know, I, I like to grade the, the assignments on um, for graduate courses on completion only. OK, and so I'm, I'm just going to check to see, you know, if you did, if you gave an honest effort for the uh, for the for the problems. And if I could see that you gave an honest effort, you know, I'm going to give you full credit for it. OK. Um, so with that said, you know, I'm 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 not going to give you too much feedback on your homework assignments, and so a lot of it's going to be on you to uh, to to check your homework, uh, to check your homework solutions against the uh, against the posted solutions, and if you have any um, any um, kind of um, you know, if you don't really understand anything, it's it's going to be on you to kind of come to me and and ask you know for help. Okay. Um, but you know, for graduate students, you know, because you know everyone here is is older, you know, I like to give you that flexibility of you know, just grading the assignments on completion, okay? All right, and so here are the dates for the, um, that I have planned for the, um, for the exams and for the final project due date, okay? Uh, and so just like I mentioned in the introduction email, you know, I, even though, you know, even though we're, we're, we're required to, um, I'm required to, um, to give this um, class virtually for the first two weeks, I do plan on, I do still plan on streaming all the lectures, um, you know, virtually, you know, for the entire semester. Uh, so the only thing that's going to change after the first two weeks is that I'm actually going to be physically in the classroom. Okay, um, and so you know if you if you're going to be on campus during the lecture times, you're you're definitely welcome to come to the lectures, and you can view it live in person. Uh, but if you can't make it to the room, then you know no worries. You can you can just view the YouTube link, um, or you can you, you can just view you can view view it on Zoom, and all the lectures will be recorded. And so I'll post it on YouTube as as well. Okay, um, and so I think I think that's. I think that's kind of a nice thing to do, especially for, you know, especially for a lot of the students in this class, because I know a lot of you are working at the same time. Okay. The only exception to this policy is going to be on the days that we have exams. Okay. And so for the exams, I am going to require everyone to come in person to take the exams. Okay. Um, and that, you know, and that basically just helps me keep the exam fair for, for everybody. Okay. And so here are the dates that I've, I've planned for the exam. And so I have one on March 9th. And I have another one on April 27th. Okay, and so if you can put those dates in your calendar and plan to come to campus on those days, um, then those are going to be the exams. Okay, so right now there are no plans to offer the exams virtually. Um, you know, of course, of course, you know, there's there's going to be exceptions because I know COVID's still a thing, and you know, there there's going to be some emergencies too. But you know, but please do please do try to make um, those dates um, for the exams. Okay. Uh, and your final project is going to be due on Monday, May 23rd. And so that's going to be the Monday after finals week. Okay. And so I'd like to push the due date kind of um, as late as possible, you know, just to give you, again, give you some more flexibility and let you turn it in. Okay. Uh, questions. So uh, what will the structure of the midterms be? So will it be pseudocode or will it be actual problem solving using math? That's a good question. And so, you know, what you'll see what and what will what you'll learn a lot in this class is you know, a lot of the um, problems that you're that you're going to do is that um, even before you get to the coding, 
um, there's a lot of setup and there's a lot of kind of equations that you have to set up by hand on paper first. And so what the exams are going to test you on is how well you can set up the problems on paper, you know, kind of prior to actually solving it in, in program. And so, you know, what I'm going to test you on is, you know, how well do you take, you know, take this physical situation or take this differential equation? How well do you discretize it? How well do you actually work through the math and finite elements and set up the problems, you know, to solve for in the computer? Okay. Uh, question. So are the exams going to be open book uh, and notes or closed one? And so for the exams, what I, I like to do is I let you um, bring a cheat sheet. And so I let you take a, an eight and a half uh, by 11 sheet of paper. You can write whatever you want on it. And then I let you bring that into the exam. Uh, but besides that sheet of notes, it's going to be closed book and closed notes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Any other questions on the, on the assignments on the exams? Okay. All right. So the course grades. And so here is the breakdown for the, uh, for the grades. Okay. And so, um, you know, homework's going to be worth 10%. Each of the exams are going to be worth 20%. And the final project is going to be worth uh, 50%. Okay. And, oh, sorry. Oh, this is a, this is a typo. So this is a, this is not true right here. Okay, I forgot to take that out. All right, and so I, I've, I've gotten some comments already about, you know, the final project is, is worth a large percentage of your grade and, you know, and I am aware of that. Okay. Um, and the reason for that is, you know, the final project is kind of a culmination of, of all of the programming and, and theory, um, you know, that we're going to be learning in this class. And so, you know, 50% is, you know, kind of reflects how important that project is. Okay. Um, so with that said, you know, I, 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 it's, it's a large percentage of your grade. And so, you know, you know, again, like I said before, you know, I, I promise to give you, you know, as all the support that you need for, for the final project, right? Um, and so, you know, if, you, if you're having issues with the programming or you're just not getting anything, you know, please just, you know, you know please just reach out to me, you know, because I, because I want, because I want everyone to succeed. I want everyone to do well on the final project. So, you know, um, you know, so please, please, you know, just reach out to me and, and, you know, and we can, we can always work, we can always work something out. Okay. All right, and so um, once all the grades are in, you know, um, then I'm going to assign a letter grade based on these breakdowns. So I think this is all fairly standard, okay? Um, and so I also have a pro um, policy of um, of adjusting final grades, okay? And so what I mean by that is, you know, I like to have the final grades be, you know, um, the average final grade for everyone in the course to be at a certain threshold, okay? And so for graduate students. Um, you know, I know I know that um, you you need a B minus in order for the course to um, to complete, and so what I like to do is I like to make sure that the, at least the course average is at that B minus threshold. And so, you know what what I do is that you know after the after the semester is done, after all the grades are in, I take the course average, and if that if that course average is less than eighty percent, then I uh, I will add a flat amount of points to everyone's grade until it reaches that eighty percent threshold. Okay. And so let's say that you know after all the grades are in and the average grade is a 77%, then what I'll do is I'll add three points to everyone's grade until the average is at 80%. Okay. And so that those three points will be added for everyone. Okay. Uh, question. So are the final projects individual or group? It'll be an individual project. And so everyone's going to write their own code and everyone's going to write their, write their own report. Yeah. Um, Right. And so, you know, that's that's my policy on on the grading. And so and so I, I don't I don't do curving, I think, in the traditional sense. And so I'm, I'm not going to curve the individual exams or the final projects. And so I kind of I kind of wait until everything is in the grade book before I make any adjustments and any adjustments that I make is, is going to apply kind of equally to everyone. OK, and so I, I usually don't do individual adjustments on grades, you know, except for kind of extenuating circumstances, um, you know, and so I, I kind of do all the adjustments as a group just like that. OK. All right, any, uh, any questions on rating policy here? Okay. All right, textbook. Um, so the textbook's not required, um, but I would say both these textbooks are, are, are pretty good. Um, and so, you know, um, don't feel pressure to pick one up, you know, especially, you know, because I know costs for everything are, are going up. Um, and, if you, and if you ask my opinion on the textbook industry, you know, I, I honestly think they're, they're the mafia. You know, they, they kind of take advantage of, of students and they charge these absurd prices for textbooks that, you know, that just kind of rob, honestly, rob a lot of students blind. And so, you know, I, I, I usually don't require textbooks for my classes, but I, I do give you the references that I use um, to, to organize the course. Okay. And so for this course, you know, I'm, I'm using these two textbooks to, to organize it, but I'm, I'm, I'm taking basically bits and pieces from each textbook. Okay. 
And so if you if you are planning to pick them up, you know these these are the two that I recommend. Okay, uh, but but you don't need them for the course because you know what I'm going to do throughout the course is um, you know I'm going to be posting all my lecture notes um, online, and actually all my lecture notes are already online, so you can view them um, already. Okay, and for the homework um, for the homework problems, you know I make up all my homework problems myself. And so I will give you the full problem statements. And so, you know, you won't have to look up problems in the book and I won't assign any readings or anything like that. Okay. Uh, but these textbooks are, they are pretty good. And so, you know, I, I do, I do like these textbooks a bit. And so, you know, if you can find a cheap version of these, of these textbooks, you know, I would say, go ahead and pick it up. Um, but again, it's not a requirement. Okay. Uh, and even better, you know, if you, you know, let's say that you just happen to find a free version of these textbooks when you're sailing the high seas, you know, I would say that that's a great opportunity too, but you know I won't say anything more on that, you know unless I because I'll probably get in trouble. Okay. All right, course website, and so you know I'll be going, I'll be giving you a tour of the website after this. Um, but basically, you know I'm going to be very active on the website. Okay, so any content that I create for the class, you know whether it be lecture lecture notes, lecture slides, homework assignments, homework solutions, um, exam solutions, study guides, you know um, sample codes, you know skeleton codes. Um, you know, all of that's going to be posted on Canvas. And so, you know, basically everything I create for this class, is going to be available to you. And so, you know, I would highly recommend that you check the course website on a regular basis so that you get, you know, the most up-to-date materials. Okay. Uh, I'm also going to be making announcements on Canvas. Um, and so, you know, those are going to be emailed to you because I think that's the most reliable way to reach everyone. And so, you know, make sure you're checking your email on a regular basis. Okay. Uh, and I also created a Discord server for the, uh, for the course as well. Okay. And I know a lot of you have already joined. And so thank you for that. Okay. And so the Discord channel is um, basically the um, the purpose of it is to give you guys a space where you can interact with your with your with your classmates. Okay. <clears throat> and so you know this is something I kind of started in virtual instruction, but but honestly, you know I I think I'll keep it because you know a lot of the uh, a lot of the activity on the Discord server has been has been really great. Okay. And so what a lot of people what what happens a lot is you know say say you're struggling with a homework problem or say you're struggling with a portion of the code. You can post on the Discord server, say, hey, you know, I'm struggling to understand this. Can someone help me out? And then people answer you. And so, you know, I, and I think that's 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 kind of a beautiful thing, you know. So you guys helping each other out with the, uh, um, you know, um, learning the content. So, you know, definitely join the Discord server if you haven't already, because it's uh, it's a great uh, it's a great place. Okay? Um, and I will say that, you know, I, I kind of leave the Discord server up to you guys. And so I, I don't really check the Discord server all that much. Uh, mostly because I, I use Discord for all my personal stuff too, um, and so you know if you um, you know and so that's really kind of a place for you guys just to interact without me you know looking over your shoulder. Okay, uh, but but if you do have a question that that only I can answer, then um, then you can then you can tag me, and so if you tag me um, in the Discord server, then I will come in and, and answer your question. Okay. Uh, another thing I'll say about Discord is that you know I I, I do allow my students I do allow you guys to message me directly on Discord. Um, but please, please only try to save that for emergencies. So, you know, um, the first time I, I did this, I, you know, I let students kind of message me directly on Discord. And, you know, um, there are some days where I had, you know, 20 or 30 students, you know, direct messaging me on, on Discord and it, and it kind of got out of hand. Um, and so, you know, I would, I would ask that, you know, if you do have a question about the course, uh, to try emailing me first, um, that, that should be your first point of contact. But if it's an emergency and you kind of need a quick response, then you can message me on Discord as well. Okay. Okay, uh, course policies. And so um, I do allow late homeworks. And so, you know, if you can't make a due date on homework, but you need maybe a day or two, you know, please do still submit it. Okay. Um, but I will dock 10% of the points, you know, each day that it's late. Okay. And you can do this for up to a week after its original due date. Okay. And so again, you know, I, I don't want you to feel like, you know, if you miss a due date, then, you know, then you can't get credit for the homework assignment. Because I, I still want you to do all the homeworks. And so, you know, this, this policy here is in place to, let you know that I, I still want to give you credit for the homework. I just can't give you full credit because it's late. Okay. Uh, next, we have regrades, and so you know I'm human, just like you know everybody else, and so you know I make mistakes when grading stuff, and so you know if you feel like I made a mistake on grading your homeworks on the on or the exams, uh, I'm always happy to take another look, and so you know please let me know as, as soon as possible, as soon as you spot it. Okay. Um, and uh, you know, and I give you a week deadline for that as well, and so. You know, a week after I've given something back to you, um, you know, if you if you want me to look at it after a week, then you know I probably won't look at it because you know it was so, it was so long ago. Okay, the reason I do this is because you know I've I've had issues in the past where you know we get to the final week of the semester and then students are like, oh, professor, can you regrade my my homework one? 
I was like, man, that was like three months ago. You know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna look at that again, right? And so this is this is kind of just to you know encourage you guys to kind of you know look at the feedback I give you, look at your grades kind of on a regular basis, and then you know and then kind of check those against that time before. Okay. Uh, question: So does EGME 540 also have a final project in MATLAB? It does not. So the final project in 540 is actually an ANSYS project. Yeah. Uh, we can talk. We can talk more offline if you want to learn more about 540. All right, and so finally we have emails. And so um, if you're gonna email me, you know, please use uh, eGME 541 in the subject line um, because this kind of just helps me organize my emails because I'm, I'm teaching four different courses this semester. Um, and so if you just send me a, an email that says help please, then you know, I'm not gonna know, you know what you're talking about. So if you, if you start, if you stay in the subject line that you're from eGME 541, um, then that just kind of helps me organize my, organize my life, okay? Uh, and I try to be um, really prompt. Um, and so, you know, I, I try to respond to emails as, as, as soon as I get them. And so most of the time you're gonna get a response from me, you know, within 24 hours, um, 48 hours at the latest, you know, the only exception is on weekends because on weekends I try to kind of disconnect from work, um, you know, and, and try to kind of live my personal life, which is, uh, which is an important thing, okay. All right. Academic dishonesty. And so, you know, this is always my least favorite part of the semester, you know, but I have to talk about it, okay? Um, and so, you know, I, I take a pretty hard, hard line stance against academic dishonesty, okay? Um, and so, you know, if you if you commit academic dishonesty, you copy you copy something or you or you cheat on an exam, you know, at the very least, you know, I'm going to give you a zero on that assignment. Um, but if it if it happens on a uh, on an exam or a project, then you know, then I I just give you an F for the whole course, okay? And I know this is a very hard line stance on this, but, you know, the reason I, I have to do this is, you know, what I want most from everyone in this class is I want you guys to take away all the learning and all the skills that, you know, that, that you know, we're going to be learning in this course. Okay? And the bottom line is, you know, if you cheat, you know, if you commit academic dishonesty, then you're, you know, then you're, then you're not learning, you know, what you, what you can, because you're just copying the solution from someone else. Okay. And so I take a really hard line stance to, to let you know that, you know, that you should be, you know, you need to do all the work yourself, but that's that's how you're going to get the most out of this class. Okay, and I hate talking about this because you know I I don't I don't, you know I I don't want to think of my job as 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 police. You know, I'm not here to police you, and I'm I'm not here to to you know just to catch cheaters. Okay, so that's that's not I don't think that's part of my job description. Okay, my job my job here is to facilitate your learning and to and to make sure that you guys learn as as much as you can. Okay, and so to that end, you know I I know I have kind of a hard stance on this, but you know, if you ever at any time during the semester, you know, if you ever feel like you're struggling in the course, you you feel like you're not keeping up or you're struggling with the homework assignments, you know, just just please, please come talk to me. And I promise you, you know, that I'm I'm not going to judge you. I'm not going to criticize you. You know, that's because that's not my job. My job is not to, you know, to, my job is not to berate you or criticize you or anything like that. You know, my job is to help you out as, as best I can and be a resource and be a support for you because, you know, you guys are here to learn skills to advance your career, you know, and, and, you know, and I, and I respect that, you know, to the, you know, to, you know, you know, to, to at the deepest level. And so, you know, I want to make sure that I'm, I'm here to support that as, as, as much as I can. Okay. And I'll tell you that, you know, I've, I've had situations where, you know, students will come to me like less than 24 hours before an exam, be like, you know, Hey, professor, you know, I haven't, I haven't gone to the lecture in the last five weeks. I haven't turned in any of the homework assignments. You know, I'm really scared of what I'm going to, how I'm going to do on the exam, you know, can you help me out? And you know what I told that student is that all right, you know we have 16 hours until the exam. Let's come up with the plan. Let's come up with the game plan to get you caught up so that you can do well on on the exam. Okay. You know I'm not going to judge you. I'm not going to say you know you don't deserve the grade. Okay, because I, I I think that's that's totally false. Okay, I think everyone deserves to do well in a course. Um, you know you just have to kind of you know do the best that you can. Okay, and I'm and I'm here to support you as, as best I can. Okay, and so please please use me as a resource because you know. If you if you come to me, you know there's always there's always something we can do. There's always there's always something that we can work out. You know if you come to me, you know earnestly, you know in good faith that you know I I need help learning this material. But if you commit academic dishonesty, you know then at that point there's there's honestly nothing I can do because you know I have this policy. Our department has the policies, and you know from there you know it's you know that's that's it. But you know if you if you if you come to me, then I promise you I'll do everything I can to help you. And you know that's that's kind of my earnest plea to you guys to you know. Please, you know, I want I want everyone to, to succeed and I want everyone to get as much learning they want from this course and, you know, just academic dishonesty just kind of takes away from that. Okay. All right. 
<clears throat> and so with that, you know, I, I want to remind you of, of the first homework assignment. And so the first homework is to um, just email an, an introduction to me. Okay. And so I know some of you have done this already. So, uh, so thank you for that. Okay. Um, and so, um, you know, just, just email an introduction and just uh, um, email to me and you'll get full credit. Okay. And you can share as much or as little as you want with me. You know, I have questions here, but this is just to kind of help get the conversation going in case you, uh, in case you're not sure what to say. Okay. And if you can do this before Sunday, 59, then, you know, you can get full credit for it. Okay. Uh, oh, question. So MATLAB is not my strong topic. What textbook is good to learn MATLAB? Um, let's, let's connect offline about this and uh, let's, let's talk about that, um, of what you can do. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, any questions on this before we get a very, very quick tour of the, of the course website? All right. Oh, question. So, um, Yes, yes. So, um, so let me let me show you. So next, I'm going to show you the course website, and then I'll show you where I'm going to post the recordings. And so you can you can access all the YouTube recordings from the course website. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. And so, uh, so the question was, you know, um, basically, where do I access the lecture recordings, and you know, and how do we access them? So all of that can be accessed through the course website. Okay. All right. And so if you go to the Canvas site and you go to the home page, you know, this is what you're going to be greeted with. And so you can see here we have the name of the course. So that tells you you're in the right place, okay? Uh, there's my name, there's my email. If you click on my name, you get this kind of weird kind of Tinder profile that I've, uh, that I've made for my name, okay? And so, you know, I'm always really embarrassed to, uh, to view that, but um, so I, I never read it, but you can, you, can, you can read it if you want, okay? Here we have a description of the course um, that we kind of just spent the last lecture going over. Here we have the course level learning objectives, which we talked about. Uh, here we have the syllabus, okay, and so if you want to um, look at the syllabus, you can you can do so from here, okay. Um, but we just kind of went over all of the important stuff from the syllabus, right? Here are all the Zoom links, and so we have the Zoom link for the lecture, which you're all inside right now. And then for the office hours, you can click on each of these links right here, and it'll take you to the Zoom room for those office hours, and I will be there during those times, okay. And if you want to join the Discord server, you know, this is the link to do so here as well. Okay. And so everything, and, and so, you know, all the essential stuff, you know, I, I try to put those on the homepage so that you, know, you don't have to go hunting around for the Zoom links or the syllabus or the Discord. Link. So I try to, I try to put all of it in kind of one place for you guys. Okay. All right. And so the last thing, I, and so the other thing I, I want you to, um, to see from the homepage is what I like to call the course outline. Okay. And so from here, you can see I've broken up the semester into a, you know, into a week by week um, breakdown. Okay. And so these are the 16 weeks of the semester. Uh, and as we go through the semester, you know, each of these links will become clickable um, and you can view basically all the information you need to know for that week, okay? And so to kind of show you, let me go ahead and click on week one, okay? And week one right here, you can see, here's all the information that you need to know for this week, right? And so here I have a little bit of a description of what we're gonna learn. Here are all the learning objectives for the week. And so, you know, these are all the skills. These are all the things I, I want you to know how to do after this week, okay? Um, here's, where gonna, here's where I'm gonna post the um, lecture recordings. And so, you know, after the lecture, what I do is I, I take the recording from Zoom and I upload it to YouTube. And then you can, um, and then you can click on this link right here and it'll take you to that recording. And so you can, um, you can view the recording from there, okay? And so after today, um, probably sometime later this evening, because it, take, it takes a while for Zoom to process it, this link here will become clickable, and then you can view the recording from there. Okay. You can also view all of the assignments for, that, are, that are due this week, uh, as well as all the lecture notes, okay? And so, you know, all the lecture notes and all the files that I want you to, um, to know, um, they can be accessed from here as well, okay? And so I like this weekly viewer because, you know, this is basically kind of your one-stop shop to say, you know, what are what are the things I need for this week? You know, what are the learning objectives? What are the where are the lecture recordings for this week? And what are all the files I need for this week as well? So, you know, I think this is kind of a really nice way to um, to kind of org organize everything. Okay. Um, and so I, I try to post the the weekly pages kind of um, on the Friday before the week. And so if you want to kind of pre-read all the lecture notes or kind of know what's up before the week starts. Um, you can look forward to those on Fridays. Okay, so I try to do those on Friday mornings. Okay. All right, and so very quickly, let's kind of look at everything else. And so next we have the announcements tab. And so here's where you can find a summary of all the announcements. And so here's the first one that I sent to you uh, last Friday, okay? Next, we have the assignments tab where you can view all the assignments that are, that are upcoming and gonna be due soon, okay? 
Next, we have the grades tab. And so this is where you can view um, your current grade in the course, okay? And so as I grade things and as you turn things in, this page will update and this will let you know how, you're, how well you're doing in the course, okay? Uh, the people's tab, this is uh, where you can view all the different, all everyone else that's in the course, okay? And then we have the files tab. And so, you know, if you wanna look for a particular file, say you wanna look for a particular piece of code, uh, or if you wanna look for particular lecture notes, you can do so from this tab, okay? And so, and so you can see here, I've, I've uploaded all the lecture notes for this semester already, and they're all numbered. So, you know, you can see that, you know, we're going to tackle these lecture notes in the order in which I have here, um, you know, um, that I have here listed. Okay. And so we just finished this one right here, which is the introduction slides. And then on Wednesday, we're going to be starting our review of map map. And so, you know, we're going to be covering these two lecture notes here as well. Okay. Um, okay, and so um, I know that was really quick, and so you know, hopefully, hopefully that kind of at least uh, familiarizes yourself, familiarizes you guys with the uh, for the website, uh, and that was an introduction of the course, right? And so, are there any final questions before we wrap it up for today? Question. Um, question. So, any tips on getting through the MATLAB coding? Yes. Yeah, so, so the MATLAB, um, you know, we'll, we'll definitely take that step by step. And so, you know, we're going to do a review of MATLAB on Wednesday. And so, you know, we're we're going to be going over all the essential MATLAB skills that you'll need. Uh, and then, as we introduce MATLAB in the course, you know, I'll I'll take it kind of step by step with you. Okay. And so, you know, what you'll see initially is that you know I'm going to give you what's called starter code. And so, when I ask you to do something in MATLAB, I'll give you kind of a skeleton of the code on which you you need to to do. Um, so that you're kind of just filling stuff in and then, you know, gradually over time, you're going to kind of build up those skills. Yeah, so I, I, I definitely don't plan on just throwing you to the wolves on that map, you know, we'll build up those, we'll build up those skills kind of step by step. Um, but if you need some more references in MATLAB, I think someone else asked that earlier today too. Um, I'm going to look up some good references and, and, and send them your way. Yeah. As intro to this, I see my cat. Okay, I'll, I'll get my cat after this. Okay. Um, Question. So I do, do I think more spots will be added to the course? Um, I'll see. And so what, I, what I've been telling people is that I usually like to wait until the end of the first week um, before um, adding um, spots to the course. And so, you know, if, if there is strong interest in the course, then I'll, I'll, add, um, I'll add more spots, especially for this course, because it's a graduate course. And I, and I know that the sele our selection of graduate courses isn't the best at times. Um, and so I know a lot of you guys are, are kind of taking this to satisfy your requirements. And so, you know, I, I will I will be a bit more generous with adding spots with this class compared to some of my some of the other classes I'm teaching this semester. Yeah. Okay. All right. Any other questions before I, I, I fetch my cat? Okay. All right. So I'm going to go grab my cat, but you know, if, if you don't want to stick around to see my cat, then, you know, you guys are free to go. So, so thank you everyone for tuning in. I, I know this is, you know, zoom is always kind of a, a weird thing. And, and I know, I know I went, uh, I went over a little bit time. So, you know, I appreciate you guys uh, staying a little bit extra. Um, but yeah, so I'm looking forward to a great semester. You know, it was great. It was great to see all of you guys here on zoom. Um, and I will see you on Wednesday in zoom as well. Okay. Um, so, okay. So let me go get my cat for now. All right, so here's my cat. I'm close this. Her name's Angel. She's an old lady. She's uh, she's seven. She's almost seventeen years old. So she's just kind of uh, enjoying her enjoying her golden years. Yep. <laughs> she's diabetic, so she gets uh, she gets insulin shots every morning, and she gets she has special diabetic food. Is my cat a fluids a fluids or structural person? She's um, she likes hard food, so I, I'd say she's a structural person. Yeah. But yeah, she's very docile because she's she's old. But she's very sweet. When she's when she's not hungry, she's very sweet. Okay, I think that's enough money. Thanks, Angel. All right. So you've all seen you've all seen my cat now. Yeah, I, I love uh, I love my cat a lot.
<laughs> yeah, you're welcome, guys. <clears throat> All right, have a good night, everyone. I'll see you on Wednesday.